How are you guys doing today? Had a good lunch? I love barbecue. So uh, I'm sorry about my voice. I'm actually, I think I'm catching on to something. I was doing all right yesterday, and then I was like, oh, my God. But uh, I didn't even party. I went to sleep. I got 12 hours sleep, and then ho thankfully I'm here. So this talk is about how to grow your email list six digits and beyond. Uh, I have multiple six-figure email lists, 300,000, 400,000, and more and for different one of my websites. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Syed Balki. You can follow me at Syed Balki. Uh, I have about 16 different companies. The one that's more popular in this space is called WP Beginner. It's the largest WordPress resource site. Um, I'm also the guy behind List25, a uh, very popular YouTube channel and a blog. It has over 1.8 million subscribers. We had 370 million video views. I have a bunch of WordPress plugins like Soliloquy, Envire, et cetera. But because I built so many different blogs and publication sites, I knew the importance of building an email list. And I ended up building the tool that I ended up using called Optin Monster. And uh, that gets about 7 billion impressions a month. And we have helped hundreds of millions of email captures for our businesses. So I'm going to be kind of fast because I know I have like 30 minutes for Q&As. We're just going to head outside and do all the Q&As afterwards. I'm going to have a slide at the end that will have all the tools that I use, so you don't need to write down any specific tool because I'm going to be going fast. So what you'll learn, you're going to learn first my number one trick to increase email subscribers in five minutes, how I use the psychology principle to increase my subscribers by 785%. Just one simple psychology trick. Um, I got that because my wife is a PhD student in psychology. So <laughs> kudos to her. Um, how we recovered 55% of our lost revenue with a simple trick, which was freaking crazy. The moment I implemented it, I was like, we doubled our sales. <laughs> Holy crap, right? Um, and how to solve the biggest list building problem before you even encounter it. I bet you half of this room is, is going through this problem, and you don't know that you're going through it, and you're going to find out in two years, and you're going to be like, oh, shit, by that time, it's going to be too late. <laughs> and, and so thank yourself for being here. And the exact workflow that I use to grow all of my email lists and a whole lot more so, but before we start, I want to talk about the importance of building an email list and why you need to start today. How many of you don't have an email list? Cool. Okay. After this talk, you're going to have an email list. Because over 70% of visitors who are visiting your website, they're leaving and they're never going to come back. So that means that blog content that you wrote pretty much went to waste. That means that PPC campaign that you're running, that you're paying for ads, went to waste. 85% of shoppers who add to cart do not buy. So if you're a business owner, that's a really big number, right? You're going to spend tons of money on retargeting ads. Again, they're going to come back, and 85% of those people are also not going to buy. And it's just an endless cycle. So the bottom line is if you're not building an email list, you're wasting like 90% of your dollars and efforts. So in case if it's not clear enough, <laughs> building an email list is important for every business. All right? Um, instantaneously, you can see a 2 to 15% uh, increase in your in your sales and your conversions. And more importantly, people are like, well, if, isn't social media the thing, right? Isn't, shouldn't I be on Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook? Well, guess what all of these social platforms ask you for when you create an account? An email, right? Because those companies understand the value of an email list. So I'm not saying social is not important. Social is very important. But you need to have a direct communication with your customers and your users. So build an email list. So a proven five-step list building process that I use in all of my business. So I'm going to talk about you know, a little bit theory first, and then I'm going to go into practical implications of it um, so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Number one, identify your target audience. If your target audience is everyone, that means you do not have a target audience. Okay? <laughs> so narrow it down. Go into your Google Analytics and look at which, which pages on your site people are clicking on. Where are they coming from? Right? Go into Google Search Console. If you haven't set up Google Search Console, go ahead and set it up first. And then look at what keywords are people searching for when they're coming to your website. And after that, go and research your competitors, right? You ha all have competitors. Look at tools like Moz. Look at tools like SEMrush. Look at tools like BuzzSumo. And do an analysis on what are your competitors' popular pages. Where are they coming from? By this time, you should know that 80% of the things that you're focusing on is not worth it. And the 20% that you are, 10x on those, all right? Two, create an irresistible offer. What do I mean by an irresistible offer? Ebooks. 
worked phenomenally. Checklists are the hottest thing right now in, in, in email marketing everywhere. Worksheets are great. Coupons and trials are amazing for e-commerce site. They have to be irresistible. It's not the mode of an offer. It's the offer that really makes and breaks your conversions. And you have to create multiple ones. So don't just have one ebook and say, oh, that's, that's the end of the day. No, create multiple offers based on different buying stages. Because somebody who's in the early stage may be okay with an ebook or a white paper, but somebody in the mid stage may want a case study, right? And somebody in the ready stage, in the final stages of the, of the buying process, may want a, free, a demo or a consultation or more one on one kind of thing. Three, add a strong call to action button. People are like, well, Sayed, what colors work best? Well, the one that stands out, all right? So if your entire page is red, the, but, the red button is not going to work well for you. Yellow is going to work well for you, right? So whenever you read these like, articles on psychology of color, it's the one that stands out, okay? Here's a good example, right? In this article, if I had added a red button, it wouldn't have worked, but a green works, all right? Moving on, have a targeted landing pages. So Marketing Sherpa is a really awesome you know, site. I follow it. Their research shows that 94% of companies find targeted landing pages to be effective. What that really says to me is the other 6% of the people didn't know what they were doing. Because they're 100% of the time they're effective. All right, so here's a good example. This is a videos landing page for WP Beginner. It has one clear action. Get admitted into the free video training course. All right, here's another example on HubSpot. A free download. One clear thing. Enter your name, email, website, and click download. Targeted landing pages have one simple action. Now, you could actually have blog posts and mega guide pages also work as targeted landing pages. Here's one for Moz. Instead of creating an ebook, they created this one web ebook. You can just click from this page and read all the different chapters. But if you look on the right hand corner, there's a start my free trial button, right? So, this is another example of a good landing page. Number five, just build high converting forms. Okay, collect only what you need. You don't need to ask for people's fax number, okay? Nobody's using fax. If you're not going to call them, you don't need their phone number either. Just an email address works just fine because you can always go back and ask them to fill in your name at a later stage. So the less number of fields you have, the, more, the higher your conversion is going to go. If you have three fields, first name, last name, and email, make it to name and email and watch your conversion go up. If it's name and email, get rid of name and add only keep email, watch your conversions go up. All right? So you've got to collect only the things that you need and you focus on behavioral targeting. All right? So Whenever I'm talking about like best lead capture opportunities, people are like, well, I have a form. It's not about having one form or two form or three forms. It's about having as many touch points as you can have. That's the secret of building, taking a high traffic site and turning it into a huge email list or taking a low traffic site, turning that into an email list that helps you become a high traffic site and a high, high um, size email list. So the number one popular form is the famous sidebar forms, right? Everybody has a sidebar subscribe form. I have one. Why? Because everybody knows where to look for when they're looking to subscribe. Now, does that mean they work well? No, they don't. Their conversions are probably one of the lowest, like 0.1% conversion, which is terrible. But the reason why you have it on your site is because everybody comes to expect it there. So the 0.1% of the people who are subscribing there, because they know what to expect. Two, after post or inline forms. These forms work really well if you have a blog post. Long form content, great. Put it after the fifth paragraph, in between your content, or at the end of the content. These work really well. This is an example from Michael Hyatt's blog. Um, three polite scroll trigger slide in boxes. These boxes, as you're scrolling, slides out from the right hand corner. You've probably seen it on the web. Uh, these are design agnostic. So that means they don't take any space. Once the user closes it, they go away. So you show it once, one at a time. Same thing with. Uh, Highly floating bars, they attach at the top or at the bottom. They were, are known as hello bars, foo bars, etc. cetera. Um, these are very noticeable, convert well. Real-time pop-ups, right? I'm a big advocate for it. People, every time I t talk about pop-ups, people are like, ew, pop-ups, right? I don't like pop-ups, pop-ups are spam. Actually, they're not. What spam is how annoyingly you trigger them. If you click on something and a pop-up shows up because you clicked on it, that pop-up works really well, and I'll show you how. Right? There's different triggers you can, you can add that makes pop-up not annoying and high converting. Right? So it's not, it's not the pop-up, it's the timing of the pop-up that matters. And full-screen welcome gates. 
These have been popular in advertising since the early days. It's called interstitials. Now the email marketers are starting to use it, and they're like, wow, I added a full screen you know, welcome gate, and I'm getting 8% conversion, or 10% conversion, or 12% conversion. Imagine 100 people come to your website, and 12 of them give you your email address. So what's going to happen the next time you publish an article? You have 12 more people. That means you have your chance of shares go up. All right? Contact form and checkout forms. Look, this is a very simple thing I did on my WP Beginner site. I have the name, email, website message, and I have a checkbox that says, yes, I would like to receive updates from WP Beginner. So when you're asking me a question, you kind of feel guilty that you're not giving me anything in return, so you just leave that box checked. It's psychology, all of it. People don't uncheck this. And then they, then they see me here, and they say, dude, I love your email newsletter. Thank you, and you're welcome. This thing works. <laughs> Squeeze pages, all right? Squeeze pages are really cool. Why? Because they serve one purpose. That's the targeted landing page. Works all the time. Joint webinar registration. Doing a webinar with yourself is great, but bringing on another celebrity is awesome because now they're going to promote it to their email list. If they're promoting, all their subscribers are coming, and then you can swap email lists, or you can you know, just share, or you can do a webinar for them and promote them. So it's a great way to cross-promote and grow your list. So don't try to say, I'm like, I have 1,000 subscribers. I'm going to go to somebody who has 100,000 subscribers and see if they will do a deal with me. No. Go with somebody else who also have 1,000 subscribers, because chances are 700 of your subscribers and 700 of their subscribers are completely different. And you each are going to benefit from that. Contests and giveaways. Contests go viral all the freaking time, and I love contests, right? There's a bunch of tools out there. Contest domination is one. Heyo is another one. Raffle Copter is another one. I particularly like contest domination. Why? Because it focuses on email building. When you go to a page, it looks something like that. It has a clock, and it says, enter your name and email. But what's really exciting is what happens next. On the next page, it says, you'll earn two entries for each friend you refer, all right? Now you're like, well, I want to win this. I want to win this iPad, or I want to win this, you know, juicer, or I want to win this, like, you know, frying pan, whatnot. And you're going to refer all of your freaking friends there. You're going to refer your mom, your sister, your aunt, your best, you know, your neighbor, everybody. And then they're going to go on this page, and they're going to be like, holy crap. So, in reality, for example, in this result, 8,392 of my website visitors went and clicked join the contest. So, well, well, they went to the contest page, but 4,000 4, of them entered, right? And then 4,000 of those people then brought me 26,000 more visitors, out of which 1,100 of them converted. So in reality, my 8,300 visitors converted at 61%, if you're thinking about it. Because you're not paying for that 26,000 additional traffic. You didn't pay for that. You didn't pay Facebook, pay per click. You didn't do any of that. So these contests work really effectively, okay? Next thing is behavior automation. Um, and that's re really where you start taking the conversion to the next level. The one that you know, I really enjoy, Exit Intent, is something that our, my company was one of the first to do. What it does, it tracks the mouse behavior. As you're trying to take it outside the browser window, it shows you a pop-up. It's better known as on-site retargeting. Because what do you do when somebody leaves? Then you start targeting them on Facebook. And you're paying Facebook to show them your ads. Well, why pay Facebook when you can do it on your own website at the precise moment they're about to leave? two to four percent increase right, right there, right there. People who are going to leave your website, two to four percent of them are going to enter your email list. I put it on WP Beginner and increased my conversion by 600 percent. That's when I was like, this is, this is an awesome product. I need to launch it. And that's how the idea came about. Scroll detection. So how many of you knew that Google actually used scroll detection as a ranking signal? So how many times, how far people scroll on your page actually determines, is one of the factors that determines how high you rank in search. And you're like, well, how does Google know this? Well, guess what? They own Chrome, all right? So, <laughs> so marketers figured out that this, this, is, this ought to be important. If people are reading my article all the way through, so maybe I should say when they get to the end of the article, that's when I should show them a pop-up because they're clearly interested. I don't want to show them a pop-up after one second that they entered because that's annoying. Or two seconds, that's annoying. But once they have finished reading, you're not interrupting them. You're like saying, hey, I know you like this. Do you want more? They're like, yeah, awesome. OK. Now, two-step opt-ins, and this is where psychology comes in play. So I wrote, I wrote an article about like, you know, how I got, I added five more hours in my day. I gained five more hours in a day. They're like, well, how did you do that? Did you, add, did you change the clock? No, I didn't. 
right? I started using time blocking, and I became really, really efficient at what I did. And I, t I was talking about it at the end. By the way, if you guys want to do it, you can download my time blocking worksheet. And they're like, cool, I'm going to download it. When they click on it, I could send them to a squeeze page, but why do that? They click on it, and a pop-up shows up. So then to your name and email, and you'll get a download. This is actually known as a Zygernik effect in psychology. And what it says is that when one person initiates, they're very likely to complete, complete that task. Okay, if they don't initiate a task, they're not as likely to complete. So here's the results. So a generic pop-up, as you notice at the bottom, was viewed 195,000 times, and the conversion was about 1%. A content upgrade that you notice at the very top was viewed 377 times and a 61% conversion. The one below it, 280 times and 54% conversion. You can see <clears throat> that this thing works really well. So here's what I would do. I would go in my Google Analytics and look at my top 10 blog posts. All right, I'll see what I can add to that blog post that will add value. So for example, if I have 14 point blog post checklist, right? I'm gonna say, well, you don't really need to come to my blog. What you can do is download this version in a PDF. Or if you have like, you know, six best ways to do it, and like enter your email address and get additional three. Just go and expand that article um, and offer that as a content upgrade. Some of my friends, what they're doing is they're just turning their article into a PDF and saying, download this article in a PDF. People download it all the time. I guess because they want to print. I don't know why anybody prints articles. <laughs> partial form submissions. People don't know, when I talk about partial form submissions, they're like, what, what do you mean by that? <clears throat> so how many of you have been to Amazon? You were browsing something and then you leave and then you get an email saying, here are the best headphones that you should be checking out. How did Amazon know? They're tracking you, right? So. What partial form submission is, is somebody starts filling out their name, email, they, entered, they selected what they were interested in, then they never typed and they left. Maybe because their wife said, it's time to go eat dinner. And then they came back, it's time to sleep, they closed the computer, went to bed. They, weren't, they were interested in contacting you. So what this allows you to do is save that entry, even when they didn't submit. So when people were going through our checkout process, they entered the name and email, and then for some reason, they would leave. We put them in a drip campaign. They were getting an automated email saying, hey, did you forget something? Like Amazon does. And we recovered over 55% of our revenue. 55% more sales. Crazy. By just adding partial form submissions. Now, contact form plugins, Wufu does this really, really well. Um, and I like it. Rejoiner is the one that you can use for card abandonment, but it's kind of expensive. Card hook is another one that's a little cheaper. We just built one in our in-house, so we don't have to pay them monthly. Okay, targeting and personalization. So the number one rookie mistake that you're, you're making right now is not building a segmented email list, okay? When you go to a talk, everybody says, you need to build an email list, right? Just like I did in my very first part. Yes, you have to build an email list, but see, most of the so-called experts haven't really been doing this for long enough to know that just building an email list is not important. You need to build a segmented email list. And what I mean by a segmented email list is group your subscribers based on interest. Because what happens is, let's say you have 1,000 subscribers, your open rate is going to be 60% or 70% or even 80%. You're like, wow, 80% of the people I send an email to open my emails. But as, as that list grows, your open rate starts declining. I know a guy, he has half a million subscribers and open rate is under 10%. That's equivalent of having like 10,000 subscribers, not half a million. So he's paying the bill for half a million, but he really has 10,000 subscribers. Why? Because you're emailing these people of things that they're not interested in. But when you group them, you can only send them personalized offers. And the way you do this is you show targeted offer based on specific pages, based on where they're coming from. If you have six categories, that means somebody's coming to your business category is not interested in your history category. They might be, but more likely than not. So if you send emails about history to the business guy, he's going to unsubscribe, or he's just going to start ignoring your emails. So you need to build smart forms on your site and show them at different areas. So on, on somebody who subscribe in business gets put in a business section. Somebody who subscribe on history does it on history. And you notice Huffington Post, New York Times, et cetera, they all have that. That's what segmenting is, and you need to start doing it right now in your business. Figure out your target demographic. Figure out, figure out your customer avatars and start grouping them. You can do traffic referral detection. That's another way of grouping them. 
is based on where they're coming from. Are they coming from Facebook? Are they coming from a guest post that you wrote on another blog? If they are, you should put them in a separate autoresponder sequence. And this is what it looks like. If they came from, you know, ProBlogger, I'll put them in, you know, ebook. If they, if they didn't, then I'll send them a video first. If they open it, I'll do this. And if they didn't, then I'll do something else. You have to start creating drip campaigns. And I helped one of my friends do it. And he was making about $7,700 a month from his blog. He went from doing that to $48,000 a month. Why? Because he was now sending out targeted emails. And he had this sequence. If somebody didn't open, remind them. Send them an alternative. Right? That's what a drip campaign is. It's before it was known as autoresponders because they were just automatic. But drip campaigns are smarter because they have a workflow. It works. If this happens, then do this. If it doesn't, then do this. And there's tons and tons of tools out there that, that are going to do it. So the ones, uh, the tools that I recommend are the ones listed here. Optin Monster is the one that I built. Um, Unbounce is great for landing pages. Contest domination is great for running giveaways. Card Hook is the one that does uh, card abandonment. Wufu is the contact form plugin. It's not a plugin. It's a service that does partial form submissions. But the form that I'm using on my site is Gravity Forms with that little checkbox, because Gravity Forms have an integration with just about everything. MailChimp is the email marketing service. For anybody who doesn't have an um, email list, use MailChimp. If you want to do a little bit more advanced stuff, the yes, no campaigns, active campaign. Um, I have a lot of clients who use Infusionsoft. Infusionsoft is really powerful, but it has another name. It's called Confusionsoft. So if you're, <laughs> if you're, if you're kind of new to it, you're not going to like it. Stick with active campaign. BuzzSumo is a really, really awesome tool. If you have not tried it, give it a try. Um, it's great to research your competitors or your industry, and SEMrush is another one. And then at the end of the day, test, learn, and improve. You know, I didn't go to any school to learn all of this stuff. I started building websites when I was 12, and I just start, you know, learning from every mistake that I made. And I'm like, you know, 13 years later, I'm here. So, thank you. Yep. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead. Uh, Pardot is a great tool. Great. Um, so I, I have a luxury of working with over 30 plus email marketing services. So I, I would definitely say Pardot is a great is a great option. I actually used Pardot, and now I'm using Google Docs. Yeah. No, Pardot is really powerful, but at the same time, it's, the pricing is a little bit on the higher end. Any other questions? No? All right, cool then. Thank you again.